tell me, who are we talking to? We are talking to Sandra. Yes. I'm Sandra Tsinglo. I'm the creator. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'll start again. That's okay, yes. Uh-huh. I'm Sandra Tsinglo. I'm the writer and performer in The Mad Woman in the Volvo at the Pasadena Playhouse. Now, I understand this came about quite unexpectedly, the play, via a trip to Burning Man. Can you describe yes. what that was all about? This is, I call it, not a coming-of-age story, but a coming-of-middle-age story where a couple of women, which I was one, to celebrate a 50th birthday, I mean, there is sort of this idea that when women turn 50, as I like to say, in L.A., they sometimes have to go off-site to do it. They don't want to do it in public. Or they throw a dinner party where people eat cheese and drink champagne and throw affirmations to themselves into a fire, like, sing, dance, paint, and love. Um, but <coughs> this group of women to celebrate a 50th, decided to rent an RV and go to Burning Man, which, for those who don't know, is an annual pagan pagan art festival in Nevada, in the scorching desert, which is known for its nudity, sex, and uh-huh. hallucinogenic drugs, which we weren't into. <laughs> we just were going for the art. But in fact, when we went there, this all, all of our lives unraveled, particularly mine. And the central event that happens in the play is this sandstorm where everything goes goes off in this in this sort of bizarre and magical sandstorm. So it's it's kind of like suburban women driving their Volvos. That's the name, the mad woman uh-huh. in the Volvo. Who who their vo- you know it's like their Volvos burst into flames and and their lives change entirely. Well, mine. and and it did change yours. It did specifically <clears throat> with, with writing of this. Yeah. So and and so the play then turns out to be about my midlife crisis of of I you know. That you're you're married, you have children, you have a household, and and I ended up having an affair with my best friend, breaking up my marriage, broke up his. But then, as happens in the play, he actually moves back home, and I'm left alone, almost 50, just looking at the wreckage of my midlife, which seems tragic. But it's funny how audiences really come along for the ride and they find it hilariously funny so there's only about midlife crises that are hilariously funny. right well there's also a fine line between uh, tragedy and uh, comedy also it's like love and hate is so <laughs> well that's why there are two masks in theater you know kind of like the right. happy mask and the sad mask and this this play definitely goes back and forth between the two a lot how long did it take you to to uh, finish the play to, to, from beginning to end Well, I mean, I I began working on this about um, a little over two years ago at the Sundance Theater Lab. Uh Is it correct? Do you want me to look at that? Oh, you can do it. You're fine. Okay, good. At the Sundance. So I began this play about uh, two and a half years ago at the Sundance Theater Lab, and I came with the memoir that it was based on, but I literally had no idea how to turn it into a play. And so I worked with my director, Lisa Peterson, and dramaturg, Mm -hmm. and they just kind of broke it down <coughs> bit bit by bit. I mean, the book is a comedic memoir. The Burning Man section was perhaps just a page and a half in the book. But Lisa said, oh, that's really the dramatic, that, that's that's the scene, that's the drama, that's, that's the, you know, that's the movie set that this mm-hmm. takes place on. So that's why this whole set, if you look at it, it's a very interesting set. We have actual sand on the stage. Nice. It's <laughs> a desert. It's Burning Man. So that sort of became the central image of the play of sandstorm, sand. Do you whiteness. recreate the sandstorm? In yes, any? we do. Ah, now yeah. that'll be interesting for audiences. I'm not going to ask you how you do it because oh, I need to see. Oh, it's fantastic. Wow. We, we totally do. Wow. Uh, I'll say fog machines. But, <laughs> but yeah, we do. And and because it, it's so dramatic. I mean, it, and it's a metaphor for right. just being in the middle of your life in this were and the play opens like mentioning Dante's Inferno <laughs> of like being in a dark midlife woods. And so that's the metaphor for being oh in the goodness. middle of your life. Uh-huh. Lost in a wood, lost in a star. It's just like going, where's, where's my North Star? Where's the next place to go? And that, that's very much the story of this play. Fantastic. Well, I wish you all the luck. It's really, I'll be coming and seeing it soon. Good. So it's an all month, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Peter, when he sent me the initial press release, I just, what on earth is this? <laughs> you know, seriously. And then, now it makes a lot of sense. So talking to you has explained a lot. Thank you very yes. much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank
Okay. Now we're recording, so maybe could you just tell me your name first? My name is Caroline. Are you comfortable? Yes, uh huh. Okay, Caroline Aaron. And Caroline, what is your position with this production? I'm one of the actresses in the production. And how did this come about? It sounds like a really silly, funny, crazy, <laughs> all of the above. Crazy ride. My participation came about from a benefit. I was, um, I'm an actress that often does plays on the radio for Los Angeles Theater Works. Uh -huh. And there was a big gala benefit, black tie one night, and I sat with Friar and Sandra. And Sandra I knew of, but didn't know personally, but worshipped her. And her partner, Fryer, who's also one of the producers, he had worked with me on Broadway many years before in a very infamous production called I Hate Hamlet. <laughs> and Fryer Fantastic. said to Sandra at that dinner party, Caroline would be great for your play. And he said, will you be in her play? And I went, sure. I didn't know what it was or anything. So the next day, my agents called me and said, you have an offer to go do this play in Colorado, a workshop for 10 days. Can we pass on this? And I went, absolutely not. <laughs> I love Sandra Singh, though. So we went to Colorado. We did a 10-day workshop um, where she added to her narrative a multitude of characters, in which I play about eight or nine of them in telling her story. And I just fell in love with her, to tell you the truth, and the material. And then after Colorado, we did a full-on production. As you know, at South Coast Repertory. Right. And from there, um, they ended up having this opportunity in Pasadena, which I didn't think I was going to be available for, because I just got back Monday night from the East Coast. Oh, did you? Were you in New York? I was starring in a play, and I've had no break whatsoever. Oh, you forced um, me. <laughs> so I've had two days rehearsal in this production, so I'm trying to catch up with the other two, to tell you the oh, truth. Uh, well, and it's opening night on Sunday, so... Yes, it is. So well. it's a race to the finish line here. <laughs> well, we've done it before, so that's good. That's fantastic. Well, thank you very much. I wish you all the luck. Thanks and it's so gonna be much. Great. great. Thank you. That's all I need. That's all you need. Tell me your name. My name is Shannon Holt. Shannon, nice to meet you. Am Shannon. I looking down there? Yeah, just looking. Yeah, I'm just going to be. Just look oh, right at me. There. Just look okay, at me. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, are you recording? Or you I am. This is, you, oh, yes, wow. okay. it's video. Yeah. Okay. So, um, how did this come about? That your collaboration with these characters here and and the the concept of the play. Oh gosh, the concept of the play. I, you know, I became involved with the play. Um, uh, when South Coast Repertory contacted me when they were working on it. Uh -huh. And um, we went to um, a festival out in Colorado to do a workshop of the play for a week. And Sandra was able to work on the script with actors. And so Caroline was there and myself. And we spent a week in the room just um, improving and reading mm -hmm. the script. And she was writing every day. And uh, of course, we were socializing at night. <laughs> you had to have so, fun, of course. Yes, and then they were lovely and asked me to join them in the uh, production at South Coast Rep, and then from there we were um, offered the opportunity to come to Pasadena Playhouse to do the play. To do the play. So, yeah. What's the, uh, maybe I should be asking uh, the the main character here, but uh, yeah, about the, burning, the Burning Man thing. I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, you should ask her about that. <laughs> now, I have never been a Shannon I've, to Burning Man, and I never want to go. I just want, really? to, I want to put that on record. <laughs> I never want to go. Why? Well, I, it's just, well, because you're outside and it's, you know, it's I'm hot. very fair. Yeah, And very uh, I would be in sunburned and, and my my uh, sunblock would, would catch all the dust. And I'd be walking around like a big, <laughs> dirty mess the whole time. <laughs> so, so the, the opening... I have no, no, no. I fake that I like it in the play. I fake it. <laughs> fake I fake it. it a lot in the play. Well, That's what actress. acting is. Exactly. You have to, you know. Exactly. Well, are you an actress or an actor? Which I'm is act correct. You know, I like to say I'm, I'm both. Huh. I'm both. I was wondering like what's politically an correct, you know. No, I just, uh, it's just the noun is actor, to be an actor. Right, to be an so actor. So when you're an actor, you're an actor. And right. then when they have to, yeah. Now, how many shows, this is going on for the month, so how many shows? Yeah. Is this done three, three nights, four nights a week? No. Um, Two nights? Madden and the Volvo was going to play eight shows a week. Oh, wow. So we do Tuesday through Sunday, and we have um, also two matinees on Saturdays and Sundays. So it's eight shows a week. That's a lot. It's a five-show weekend if you count Friday to Sunday. Wow. Yeah. You're going to need a vacation after this, huh? <laughs> yes, I know. But it's, it's great because it's a quick, under 90-minute, mm -hmm. no intermission, no which intermission. people love. That's, that's good, yeah. 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 So, and it's a fun, wild ride. Everybody loves it.
Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. That's really all I need. Thank um, you. If there's anything you wanted to add or about the production that you're particularly excited about? Or? Um, I'm just excited for Pasadena to see, yeah, see the show. Such a, <laughs> such a funny idea. Isn't it? It's a great idea. It's a great Sandra's concept. Sandra's brilliant and yeah. um, it's so much fun with these actresses being on stage. We have a really, really good time together and the audience, the audience, um, the audience does too. Yeah, we all are in right. it together right. in this piece. So That's there the is nice, audience interaction. So. Nice thing about a live theater. Yeah, and Sandra's a, a small production like this. Yeah, yeah, and she's a master of um, working with an audience because of her experience right, doing radio. her own one woman shows in front right, of an audience. Right. So she really knows how to feed off of them. And um, as an actress myself, it's just been a, a learning experience to watch her. I call her like a stage magician. <laughs> how she just really knows how to work wow. that audience. And it's That's fantastic. It's really fun. Well, thank you very much. You're Okay, we have Sheldon Epps, and Hi. thank you, Sheldon, for talking with us. Give My me pleasure. a quick rundown of what's going to happen uh, in the next month with this fabulous production. Well, we start previews tonight. Tonight is the first public performance, so an opportunity for uh, Sandra and the other actresses to see how it plays in front of our audiences. And uh, we open on Sunday. Sunday. And we'll be here for the rest of the month. And uh, I'm just thrilled to have the show here because I've long been an admirer of Sandra's work. And I uh, think it's brilliant and funny and witty and all of those great things. But in this case, also very deeply emotional mm -hmm. and uh, complicated and full of rich ideas. And it's somewhat easy to think of it as a woman show. But uh, when I saw it down in South Coast Rep, the men were just having a great time. So. Uh, I encourage everybody to come. So it's uh, so maybe men can actually learn a bit more about women in midlife crisis. <laughs> there you go. And there you go. It certainly is about a woman's experience, right. but as we well know, we men have to go through those experiences with the women. We so it's, it's very much about uh, all of us. Well, terrific. Well, good luck with the blurry. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Short and sweet. Okay. <laughs>